Hey, John, can you introduce yourself? I'm John Kelm. I'm the conference chair for CPPCon. Great. So let's talk about it. This is the third year for CPPCon. This is CPP the third Con. year. Yes. Um, how, many, how many people we got out here this year? We are just over 900 attendees this year. Wow, that's awesome. I think so. It's, uh, it's a 20% growth this year, which is the previous year was 20. I'm sorry, it's 25%. The previous year was 20. So we're actually accelerating. Right. So uh, how many talks do we have this year? Uh, we have, we, we've had six tracks in the past. This one we kind of went six and a half. We, we've got about, we have two days where there were seven so tracks. So we're storing it in a flow. So it's year. about a hundred different, a hundred different sessions. And then of course we have lightning talks. So you count those as separate talks and there's a lot of talks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even though I'm here, like I, actually I'm looking forward to them starting to show up on YouTube because I spend a lot of time in the booth and even when I'm in one talk, I can't see the other six. That's right. Even if you never miss a session, you're still only seeing one sixth of the whole conference, right? And um, so that's why it's, it's so good that Channel 9 is, is, is doing this. And now this year, because we've had 100 talks three times, you guys will have now 300, 300 sessions. And that's, that's, that's terrific. It's wonderful. But I don't want people to think um, that videos are a substitute for being here. Being able to ask your questions, being able to meet speakers, and certainly the conversations that go on uh, in the yeah. hallway and at lunch and dinner. There's no substitute for being here. You, you need to be here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just amazing, like being out in the hallways in between sessions and watching people, like making connections. That's right, and, that's and right, that's right. Meeting new people. And it's, it's always fun to see people coming out of what you can tell must have been really exciting because they're, you know, hands are waving and they're yeah. excited and, and talking to each other because ideas have just been planted and they're exploding, yeah. Another thing I really like about the conference is the way that, we, you know, that there's educational content, but there's also applicational content. Right. You know, right, people. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 And it, it, it's all on the map. I mean, some of the some of the sessions are a little more on the academic side. Many of them are very practical. Uh, some of them are pretty advanced. Some of them are are more newbie-ish. Right. Uh, and so it's all over the map. And then of course we have before the content we have formal training. We have two days what we call them the pre-conference classes. This is like the Saturday and Sunday the before the The Saturday and Sunday before of. the conference, right, right, right. And those have been very popular. So we had over 200 students this year in those. We had five classes. So yeah, so it was very, very popular. Last year we had one class and uh, that went really well. So we Great. expanded that. Okay, so if people want to get like, how do we get people, like what do they need to do in order to make sure that they don't miss out next year? All right, well, <laughs> um, I recommend that uh, you know, if you're a professional C++ programmer, you should be visiting iocpp.org at least once a week just to see all the news. That's right. And, and you'll see... Your RSS reader, yes. Right, that's right. Um, we will certainly be covered there because we're actually a, a project of the Standard Foundation, which also runs that website. So we get good coverage. <laughs> but you can go to our website and see all the, you know, all the progress and what we're doing. But, and but and if about you just, what time of year does registration open up, for instance? Um, we are trying to open it up as early in the year as possible. So I don't think it was, I think it was open to the end of January this last year. And we'll try to focus on that again. We want to get, uh, get open as soon as possible so that people can start, start making their plans. Yeah. Okay. Any last comments? Um, I'm looking forward to meeting you here. <laughs> All right. See you next year at CPPCon. Okay. Can you introduce yourself? So I'm Vincent Roverdi, and I am a researcher at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, and I am working in between computer science and astrophysics. So I'd just like to say, go Illini. Also, uh, Illini. me too, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, so what's the name of your talk? So my talk is from uh, numerical cosmology to uh, bit manipulation. And uh, the purpose of the talk is to illustrate how we came from Numerical cosmology to try to optimize things with bits. Okay. So the whole purpose of the talk is to illustrate uh, how we design something that we aim now to introduce in the in the standard library for C++. Awesome. Uh, to manipulate bits and to replace uh, std vector and std bit set. Okay. Wow. That's a big. That's <laughs> a big. It's a big thing. Vector and yeah. bit set. Yeah. Um, so who's the right audience for your talk? Like who should be watching this? So the audience is mainly people who are working either on data structures, on high performance computing, I see. and all people who are working with also uh, arbitrary precision arithmetic and who wants to have the best possible performance using bit manipulation. Okay, great. Thank you very much. 
Okay, so can you introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Miodrag Milanovic and I'm coming from Novi Sad, Serbia and I'm here to uh, represent MAME development team. Cool, so what was your name of your talk here? At uh, well, uh, my uh, full name of my talk is uh, the MAME story uh, from C to C++. Oh, okay, cool. So can you tell me a little bit, like, who's the ideal audience for your talk? Yeah, well, ideal audience would be uh, everyone who is uh, in uh, keeping his uh, legacy code mm -hmm. uh, in uh, to move it to the modern, modern C++ okay. and also for the emulation enthusiasts. Okay. So like you by watching this talk you'll learn about like taking a, a legacy sort of code base and moving it into more of a modern C++. Yes, right. Uh, so idea is to show uh, what we have learned in past 20 years and from the time we started to move from the C to C++ first and then from the C++ to the modern C++ to just to show the uh, new capabilities, uh, where we uh, feel the gain of it, and uh, how it all works. Great. So maybe it'd be very useful for people who are trying to like motivate their own organizations to right. move forward. Right, right. And it's all about the games, of course. So, And also, if you're a classic gamer, you can learn <laughs> yeah. some more things about sure. how MAME works so that you can play sure. all your favorite exactly. games. Exactly. I, I hope we are will be able to show something and how it, uh, everything looks. So I don't think it will be interesting to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, can you introduce yourself? Sure, hi, I'm Daniel Moff. And uh, who do you work for and all that good stuff? Uh, so I work on the Visual Studio team, specifically the Visual C++ team. Uh, I'm the manager of the program managers on that team. I knew that. Okay, so uh, tell us the name of your talk. Uh, so the name of the talk was uh, the latest and greatest in the Visual Studio family for C++ developers or something close to that. Okay, great. And, and so like who should watch this talk? Like what's the pitch? Oh, everybody, obviously. <laughs> obviously. But specifically, uh, this was aimed at C++ developers as the title of the talk hinted. And it's uh, <laughs> about, yeah, and it was about what is uh, the latest or what is new and what is the greatest, which is all of it really. Uh, so it was aimed at anyone interested in what we're doing new in the Visual uh, Studio C++ space. And that includes Visual Studio the IDE, uh, Visual Studio Code, and also the compiler tool sets. If you're just using the compiler, that's fine, that's cool as well. Cool. Uh, what were some of the highlights of the things that you covered there? Uh, so I don't want to give too much away because I want people to yeah, go yeah. see it. Uh, but we talked about our progress on uh, conformance, and the only thing I'll tell you about that, people were clapping. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's something to look forward delight to. Was, a delight occurred. <laughs> exactly. All right. um, then the other thing we talked about was productivity. There was a demo there. Uh, people were wow and who and cheering. The demos I heard were really good. The demos were good, yeah. The content was so good, no matter who demoed, it would have been great. <laughs> okay. Should we let them in on our little, or, you know, who the, who the excellent uh, demo Oh, they don't was? know that? No. Oh, oh yeah, it's Steve. Yeah. Hi, hi. Yes. how you doing? So Steve was doing the demo. So Steve, you showed the productivity demo. What, was, what, what happened there? Uh, it, it went smashingly. So uh, we did, uh, we're going to demonstrate for you uh, Linux from Visual Studio. We're going to show some really cool CMake uh, integration. We're going to show uh, all sorts of new ways to kind of like navigate around inside your app. So if you're a Visual Studio developer, you can like really get fluent in your you know, keyboard around the, the entire solution and some authoring stuff and a whole bunch of new diagnostic tools inside of Debugger. Yeah, that, and that did go really well. Steve actually did a good job uh, there. I was surprised, <laughs> uh, but, he, but he did, uh, especially showing the demo to Linux. And I won't give away the, the highlight there. Like the room was up. So you got to watch that one. <laughs> OK, thanks, everybody. All right, that was fun. Hi, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Greg Law. I'm co-founder and CEO at Undo. Cool. Can you, so, and Undo is, what does your company do? So, we allow software developers to see what their code really did, as opposed <laughs> to what they expected it was going to do, which like, often isn't the same thing, right? Got it. And so, what's the name of your talk? So, the name of my talk was uh, GDB More Than You Realized. OK. That's awesome. I, I'm an ex-debugger guy myself. So uh, tell me a little bit about what your talk is about and who the ideal audience right. for it would be. Yeah. So I think anyone developing uh, C++ on, on a non-Microsoft platform is likely to have used GDB at some point. Yeah. Well, uh, and it's really that, that there's a lot more than most people know, right? It's not one of the things it lacks is the ability easily to discover what's there, right? As opposed to something like Visual Studio, where you can I kind see. of see we what's don't in front have the of UI you. To work right, with. right. So, so if you uh, if you don't know it's there, you don't know what to search for. You don't know what. To look. So it's kind of presenting a bunch of stuff that most people, many people anyway, don't know is there. 
Cool. Some of it's quite simple, some of it's quite advanced. Great. So the ideal audience is somebody who is uh, working on a platform where GDB is available and they want to kind of get deeper and get better at debugging. Exactly right, yeah. yeah. And get more, you know, this powerful tool, uh, but, but you need to know what's there in order to get advantage of it. That's great. Thanks, Greg. Cool. All right, guys, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, so my name is James McNellis. I'm a member of the Visual C++ team here at Microsoft. My name is Kenny Kerr. I'm on the Windows team. OK, so can you guys tell us the name of your talk and why someone should go and, and, and see it? Yeah, so I gave a talk yesterday morning called Introduction to C++ Coroutines, in which I introduced the new coroutines feature for the C++ language. Um, it's basically an introduction of how coroutines are being added to the language, what a coroutine is, how you write coroutines, how you use coroutines in your code. Uh, and then I talked a bit about efficiency and you know, just basically how the feature works. Uh, that, that one's sort of, so it's the intro, it's sort of like the beginner, anybody trying to get acclimated yes, kind of scenario? Yes, if you want to know how to write your very first coroutine or okay. how to use code, you know, write basic code that uses coroutines, that is a great talk for you. Okay, and there was actually like more or less a mini sequence of coroutines talks there, right? Yes, yeah, so yesterday we had three coroutines talks. Um, mine was the first one, and then Gore gave a talk uh, on uh, coroutines internals where he talked a lot about optimization and how coroutines are you know, a very lightweight and often zero weight abstraction for C++, which is really great. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Kenny and I gave a talk uh, yesterday afternoon. Yeah, uh, we actually gave two together. On Monday we gave one on, uh, on C++ WinRT. It's a new standard C++ language projection for the Windows runtime. And on Tuesday we did a, a follow-up talk where we took that and applied coroutines to that. So uh, That's cool. using coroutines to really empower the async experience in that uh, platform. So let's talk a little bit about the C++ WinRT talk. Um, sure. So that's based off of some work that you've talked about in, with the community before, the modern was Yeah, that's called. right. I, I'm actually fairly new to Microsoft. Uh, before I joined Microsoft, I created a new standard C++ language projection for WinRT. So prior to that, uh, Microsoft had uh, projections for C Sharp and JavaScript and a couple of others. Uh, but there was nothing for the standard C++ developer. Right, just C++ CX. Right? Yeah, so if you're happy with the extensions, you can certainly use C++ CX. But if you want to use standard C++, you're kind of stuck. Uh, it wasn't very easy. Uh, so C++ WinRT helps you with that. That's great. Um, and so basically that talk is good for anybody who is interested in being able to use WinRT things, but without having to use any sort of non-standard ex extensions. That's extension right, yeah. Language. So if you're looking for the productivity of C Sharp, but the performance of C++, this will be interesting to you. Great. Um, and then the coroutines talk now on that one. So then that was, I think the way to think about that is the coroutines talk about this, the WinRT talk is like how your evolution, how your design for it kind of evolved once you sort of enabled it. Is that the right way to think about it? Yeah, so it was basically, um, it was almost like our practical experience with adapting um, coroutines coro 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 to work with the WinRT library. So, you know, how we actually used coroutines in practice. Um, how we took the Windows Runtime API, which is already highly asynchronous, and then we adapted those asynchronous operations to work very naturally with C++ coroutines, uh, and then how we were able to extract uh, great performance out of them. Uh, we also show how you can uh, use coroutines in order to do some really awesome uh, things that you wouldn't have been able to do in the, in the past. So for example, if you imagine like you've got an on-click handler on a button and you sure. have to you know, go and do some I.O. on a background thread and then come back to the foreground thread you know, in order to re you know, set some text box or things like that, uh, you would generally need to have three different functions in order to do that. You have to have the click handler, you then have to have your background task that's going mm -hmm. to run on the background thread, and then you need to have the callback that will run on the UI thread again in order to set the, um, set the data. And with coroutines, uh, Kenny was able to build um, you know, basically the ability to switch co uh, the context in which your function is running just within a function. So you can have one function that does all three of those things, and it starts off on the UI thread, and then you transition to the background thread, run your long-running I.O. operation, and then you transition back to the UI thread to access any objects that are context-bound, like a text box. Mm. Great. So if you're interested in coroutines, we've got three talks for you. And if you're interested in uh, WinRT, we got two talks for you there. That's great. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you. OK, next up. Who are you and what do you do? Hello, my name's Guy Davidson. I'm the coding manager at Creative Assembly, which is a games development company based in England. Awesome. And so what's the title of your talk today? Uh, the title of my talk is SG14. And, okay, and what, that's the study group 14, that's right? That's study group 14. Uh, WG21, which as you know is the C++ working group, has a number of study groups affiliated with it. 
14 in fact, SG14 is the most recently convened and it's related with low latency, um, high performance, efficiency, um, financial and trading kind of stuff, uh, games development particularly, which is why, why I'm interested. It. It's all the really high, fast stuff, the kind of things that, you know... It's where time truly is time money. Time truly is money, indeed. Great. So who's the right audience for your talk? Who should be watching it? Well, um, that's a good question. I think everyone should be watching it. Um, ideally, I guess game developers would be interested, but also people who are um, developing systems for financial companies, for trading, high-speed trading, that kind of thing. Sure. But anybody who's got an interest in high-speed code, um, low-latency code, um, code that needs to go really, really fast, because the standard doesn't necessarily prioritize that sort of, um, that part of the trade-off of engineering. I see. What we're trying to do is come up with ways of improving the standards such that we can write more efficient, less latent code by Got default. It. And in, in the talk, are you basically covering like what the study group has been looking at? All of its, like, is it a sort of status report or? or? It is a status report. Um, the group has been running for oh, a couple of years now. Yeah. We have a number of papers in flight. We have proposals which are about to become papers that will be set into flight. We've got a big reflector, uh, an email group, a Google group, sure. just Google ISO CPP SG14 to find us. And on that group, you'll find all the stuff that we talk about. We have telecons every month uh, where we all chast each other. <laughs> the signal to noise ratio is really, really, really high. It's, it's good content. It's worth joining the group and you know, just seeing how a group can be run. Great. OK, so if you're interested in any of those domains, this is, this is the talk for you. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, Guy. You're welcome. Um, so can you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Vittorio Romeo. I currently work for Bloomberg in London. And I try to be active in the C++ community by producing videos, tutorials, and libraries. And that's pretty much it. Cool. So what was your talk about today at uh, CBPCAS? So my talk was called Implementing Static Control Flow in C++14. And it's about the implementation of a static branching construct and a static iteration construct. And that's commonly known as static if. OK. And uh, static for. And I implement a static for in two ways, using one famous snippet from Sean Parent, which is for each ah, argument. Yeah. And also by creating a glorified fold that allows you to use continue and break, as in a normal fold for loop. So who is the like ideal audience for your talk? Like, is it people are looking for like how to do cool tricks in C++? Or like, what is the? So I think the audience is pretty much everyone who's interested in the newest standards, because okay. if constexpr, which will be introduced in C++17, yeah. is a compile time branching construct. And if you want to know more about that, I'll talk about it in my talk. But um, if you don't have access to C++17, I'll show you how to implement static if in C++14 with a little slightly less enticing syntax, but <laughs> it's still cool. Uh, the audience needs to have some sort of template knowledge. I don't okay. want the audience to be experts. So not total basic. No right. total basic, but not, not expert on Right, you yeah. have to, don't have to be a template metaprogramming genius. No, you don't have to. OK, okay. <laughs> great. All right, thanks, Vittorio. You're welcome. OK, great. Can you guys introduce yourself? Go ahead, Rob. I'm Rob Irving. I'm the host of CPPCast. Uh, my name is Jason Turner, and I am the co-host of CPPCast. And you guys have just a ton of content here at CVPCon. I think you did three, and you guys then have one of those together, right? Yeah, that's right. So let's start with the, uh, the, your sort of solo albums, so to speak. Okay. <laughs> can, you, can you tell us a little bit? What are the titles, and what were they about? Uh, I have uh, three total. I've only done two so far. Uh, so my main one was the plenary this morning, which okay. is um, rich code for tiny machines. And I programmed a Counter 64 game in C17. And then my next talk uh, that's coming up tomorrow is uh, Practical Performance Practices, which is a reprisal of a talk that I gave at C++ Now in May this year. Cool. And who is like, the ideal person to attend those two talks um, or to watch online, I guess? I, I think for both of those, it would be people who are concerned about making um, simple C++ code that compiles well. Awesome. OK. And then you guys have like sort of your, 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 your fabulous duo talk. So, so tell me about that one. What was the title of the talk, Rob? So that was uh, what we learned from the C++ community. Uh, we've been doing this podcast together for about a year and a half. We've yeah. got 70 episodes under our belt. And we just went over a couple of things we've learned over the making of the show. OK. So like without totally spoiling the entire talk, what, what, what are some uh, key insights that will motivate everybody to want to jump <laughs> on that uh, link? 
Well, uh, I talked about C++ for the web. Uh, okay. We've had guests talking about WebAssembly and Include OS, which is another uh, new thing that just came out recently. And then I also talked about C++ for the next generation. Yeah. That's true. Like yeah. the next generation. <laughs> 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 you know, like the next generation of programmers. Next generation like of programmers. The youth of America and their C++ yeah. and, okay. Exactly. Uh, it's a, for the next generation, not C++, the next generation. Right. I, I see. <laughs> Which is a terrible spin-off that we're gonna know. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Some ways better than the original. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anything else you guys wanna you wanna pitch people on to make sure that they watch your talk? Uh, the main thing we wanna pitch people on maybe is just to check out CPPcast too, if we can do that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So that's uh, our podcast. We're semi-weekly. We might miss an episode here and there. Yeah. What did we work out you to like forty-five episodes per year or something like that? That's yeah. impressive. Yeah. yeah. We can barely get one of these out a month. <laughs> 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 They're shaming me on my own show. No. Uh, yeah. Cool. Well, how did people check out CBPcast if they haven't already? You can just go to cbpcast.com, and we also published our episodes on Channel Nine usually. Awesome. Yeah. Great. So easy. Great. Thanks for coming, guys. Thank Thanks. you. Um, can you introduce yourself? Sure, thank you. Um, my name is Michael Wong. I am the uh, Vice President in charge of Research and Development at CodePlay. I'm also the Chair of um, SG5 for Transactional Memory and SG14 for Low Latency Games Development, Embedded Systems, um, and Financial Trading. Oh, cool. Okay, so <laughs> you've had a very busy CPP con, I think. You've, you've done multiple talks, so, <laughs> so uh, let's go through them in order. So, like, what's, what was your first talk? What was its title? Monday, Monday, right away, I had to do the SG14 review, where I talked about the progress we made in SG14, the papers that got into C++17, um, and the oncoming papers that, are, that we've been discussing for C++20. Got it. So I'm guessing that one is like if you have if you're if you're interested in the domain that SG14 is covering, like yeah. you work in fintech or you work yeah. in games, that that's yeah. definitely one you are definitely yeah, going to check about, out. Yeah, we had about 200 people and a lot of people um, asking about um, what uh, what additional containers we would like to have, what uh, additional algorithms. So yeah, there was that's a lot great. of interest. And I can imagine that it, with that one, it gives you sort of an opportunity if you're trying to get more involved in the study group. If you want to yeah. get there, that'd be a good way to get caught up, maybe. It's a way to get caught up, and it's a way to see what's coming this week. Um, and also, and also the, the, a lot of people attend because we're not talking about what we've done, we're talking about what they have done. Right. And that's why so many people are there to, uh, are there to just to represent the kind of little things that they've been doing, not some, some little, some very big, so, so it's, it's exciting, yeah. Okay, what's next? What's after that one? Well, after that one, I, did the, I, I along with my colleague Gordon Brown from Coldplay Software, um, did a talk on about how we're gonna bring heterogeneous computing to C++. Right now, C++ is only designed for CPUs. Okay. So, CoPlay Software has just released Sickle, or what, they, what we call Compute CPP, okay. which, is par which is actually um, heterogeneous computing using all just pure C++ from the ground up um, so that you can dispatch to GPUs, you can okay. dispatch to accelerators, you can dispatch potentially to FPGAs. And add on to that, we also have, have added support for parallel STL, which is now in C++ Great. 17. Great, yeah, it's part of the... Yeah, so we're one of the few that actually have implemented parallel STL uh, <laughs> awesome. using, using the SICL interface, which is a way, which is the, the, which is a, a way of doing that, you, that is very open C to some extent based on OpenCL. Great, um, so that one, I guess, if you're into heterogeneous computing or if oh, you're completely. in super high performance, yeah. that's a great way to learn about that. And to some, and low latency as well, too. If you're into low latency, low power, embedded devices. So the, the, big, the, the, the big takeaway from there is that on top of that, now you can use that, that, that programming paradigm to do things like self-driving cars. We're all into that now, nowadays. Yes. Um, how to do neural networks, artificial intelligence, machine vision, TensorFlow the kind of things Great. that we actually are inter interacting every day, but we don't know it. Whenever you do Google Translate, it's probably going to some neural network engine. When you're trying to identify the cat in that picture, it's probably <laughs> doing something like that. So yeah, this is a very, very exciting field. So a lot Especially of people so like if you want to train for recaptures, that would be another good thing. Exactly. But the, but the big thing is, all that stuff is in the, the sickle, entire sickle uh, framework is now free to download. We just released it just before the meeting. And at CPPCon, this is the place we wanted to make sure that people hear about it. Great. So what was the third one? The third one's today. I just finished the full day SG14 meeting wow. where we went through a, an actual C++ standard meeting. Um, present to have people come and present papers to us. And we reviewed them and passed them forward into the standard. This is 
This is how, pay, how features get added to the C++ standard. There was a lot of people. There was over 50 people in the room. Mm -hmm. We had about 15 papers. We just barely finished. Okay. This is 6 o'clock right now, maybe yeah. even 6.15. And we started at 8.30. Oh, my. And there was so many, so many new containers, so many new um, algorithms that people wanted to add that's going to make C++ so much faster. Um, for low latency. Apparently C++ is an endurance sport. It is an endurance <laughs> sport that you were mentioning. That's why I look a little bit um, out of gas because I am just, just ran here right after that. That's right. You intend to fall asleep immediately after we say cut. No, that? no. There's still work to be done. I need, I need to prepare for my third talk, my next talk. I see. Which is on um, lock-free programming using hazard pointers and, um, and recopy update. So this is a lock-free technique that we intend to introduce to the C++ standard. Okay. I've been working on the interface with two brilliant authors, um, Mag and Michael, who invented um, hazard pointers, and Paul Great. McKinney, who invented RCU. And we, we've been trying to, to so it, the invention was usually coded using C, mm -hmm. but now we would like a C++, complete C++ end-to-end -end interface. And that has proven um, difficult because um, it's very challenging. These things are very complicated concepts, yeah. and trying to make it work within C++ adds another layer of complexity. But we're so getting that there. More, that's more advanced level talk? Is that the very, right way? very much so. so but, um, but that's going to happen on Friday. Okay. Yeah, so. okay. Well, I think so by the time we get this, <laughs> they'll all be on the internet or something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So thank you. That's right. basically, Thanks, that was my week. Thank you great. very much, Steve. Bye. Always great to, 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 to see you personally, by the way. Thank you. All right.